Last time I talked about how AMD and Nvidia are using the universal set of pandemic excuses as a smokescreen to raise the MSRP prices. However, it is extremely difficult to even get a GPU at MSRP as the street prices today are significantly higher. In this video, we'll look into the reasons why the street prices are so high, and it's not the reason AMD and Nvidia want you to believe. Let's get into it. Nvidia's latest earning call showed that they are making record profits at over $6.5 billion in quarter two, with just over $3 billion of that coming from the gaming segment. They contend that of that $3 billion in the gaming segment, only $266 million came from the crypto mining processors or the CMP cards they created. That's right, they bundled the CMP cards into the gaming segment. In that earnings call, Jensen made a statement about future availability and he said, he would expect it enables a supply constrained environment for the vast majority of next year is my guess at the moment. So what does supply constrained mean? Is the volume of GPUs lower than before? So I did some research and I found a chart over at Tom's Hardware. Using data from John Petty Research, they plotted the quarterly volume of discrete GPUs that have shipped since 2014. What you can see is that in quarter four of 2020, when Ampere launched, they had over 9 million GPUs, and that's only gotten better since then. That is much higher than any quarter since the Turing generation. So if supply seems pretty good, then it must be a demand problem. Throughout that earnings call, Nvidia kept stressing demand, demand, and more demand. But where is that demand coming from? He mentioned the increase in gamers is up 20% from last year. However, the revenue is up 85% from last year. Now, I understand the average transaction price, or ATP, is increased, but that 20% increase in gamers does not explain the 85% increase in revenue. There is other demand here that is not represented by gamers. Could that be miners? But Nvidia got rid of those with the LHR cards, right? One sharp analyst, John Pitzer, asked a rather direct question in that earnings call with regard to the effectiveness of their LHR implementation. Nvidia was very quick to avoid answering that question and Jensen quickly then pivoted to talking again about gamers and demand. So that made me suspicious. It's not what he said, it's what he didn't say. Since he adeptly avoided answering the question, he was clearly trying to convey his message of demand and gaming to the investment analyst. He did not want to address the concern of the analyst, which was, since miners were the reason for the demand before the implementation of LHR, are miners still a reason for the high demand after LHR? So I went on a journey, an investigative journey, to understand miners and how they view these new LHR cards. I also found an article by John Petty Research where they calculated that 25% of the GPUs went to miners and speculators, but it only takes into account dedicated miners. They have no way to flush out the casual miner. And what is a casual miner? A gamer that casually uses their GPU for mining. Then I spent many, many hours reading blogs, watching videos from YouTube channels dedicated to GPU mining, watching live streams and chats and joining discords to see what the mining community thinks of LHR cards. And that's when it hit me. If you spend any time in the forums, discords, or live streams, you will find that the unprecedented demand is coming not from gamers, not from miners, but from the casual miners. These are people who typically are gamers and then discovered the profitability of GPUs to do mining. So they buy another GPU, then another GPU, and then they are building a rig, then another rig. There is example after example of people who found the profitability of GPU mining irresistible and quickly expanded to building rigs with six to eight GPUs each. Just imagine if these people only purchased one GPU for their gaming machine, then all gamers who wanted a GPU this generation would have one, including me. In retrospect, I could have saved myself quite a bit of time on that journey if I just remembered follow the money. To understand how a miner thinks of the LHR cards and getting back to the analyst question on the effectiveness of LHR GPUs, let's go over to NiceHash and calculate the daily profits of an LHR versus a non-LHR GPU. A 3060 Ti non-LHR earns about $4 a day. A 3060 Ti LHR version earns $3.33 per day. A 3080 non-LHR earns $6.25 a day. 
while a 3080 LHR version earns about $5.16 a day. And then a 3090, which is always non-LHR, earns $7.86 a day, while a 3080 Ti LHR, which is almost a 3090, earns $5.11 a day. So while LHR reduces the profitability, the reality is the LHR cards are still very profitable. Nice job, Jensen. The LHR cards are profitable and miners are willing to pay much higher prices than MSRP as long as the payback periods are reasonable based on the level of risk they are willing to take. Now I know many of you also want to blame scalpers and bots, but they are not the problem. They are a symptom of the problem. Fundamental problem is that miners are willing to pay higher prices based on the earnings and payback periods involved, or as they like to say, the return on investment. Miners have an insatiable appetite for more, and more GPUs makes them more money. Greed is an incredible force in human behavior. I have wondered why I have not been able to get a GPU over the past year, and the answer is simple. Miners want it more. They see these GPUs as little money makers, and they are willing to pay much higher prices to get a GPU for mining. For me, it was just about being able to game at 4K to increase my quality of entertainment. That is not as strong a force as greed. When you understand the profits involved and the mentality of GPU miners, it's really very simple and it comes down to this. A modern day GPU is not a graphics processing unit for gamers. It is a mining processing unit first and can play games second. And when you look at it from that perspective, you can easily understand the existing environment we are in today. Why don't Nvidia and AMD just make more GPUs to satisfy demand? There is a lot more to that answer than just supply constraints, and that could be another video. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below, and if you like this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing. In the next video, we'll look at some trending scenarios and my reason for hope, and we'll also look at Intel and their new ARC branding of GPUs, and will they be the proverbial camel that breaks the straws back to bring GPU prices back down to MSRP. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.